this is Dale DuPont with Workboat Magazine at the Coast Guard 7th District Headquarters in Miami with Lieutenant Commander Craig Allen, Commanding Officer of the Coast Guard Cutter William Flores. This is the third and most recent of the fast response cutters to be delivered to the sector. The vessel, which was built by Bollinger Shipyards in Louisiana, will be commissioned November 3rd in Tampa. Good morning, Mr. Allen. First of all, please tell us the major ways this cutter differs from the last generation, how it helps you do your job differently and better. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, this is a, uh, in many ways, uh, superior vessel to the 110-foot island class that's replacing. Uh, for one thing, the most obvious feature is it's much larger. It's about half again as long, about twice the tonnage of a 110. Um, and then uh, the pilot house itself, the electronics that this, that this cutter is going to have are uh, the next generation up from uh, what we were using before. Um, because it's just a lot more operational capability. Uh, ability to process information that is collected through various sources and then also to take the information that we receive on scene and transmit it back to our operational commanders ashore or on other units. Uh, one of my favorite advantages versus the 110-foot uh, the platform is our small boat capability. So instead of launching a small boat with a crane as we did before, uh, now we have a stern launch capability which is much easier, much safer, requires far fewer people and the boat itself is, uh, is also much better it's able to operate um, 100 miles or more from the cutter over the horizon. Um, so a very capable small boat. Also good for uh, pursuing other contacts that we have to uh, chase. Okay, great. Tell me a little bit, elaborate a little bit more about its sea keeping abilities and some of the onboard features, such as the electronics and crew accommodations and the machine guns. Sure. So uh, we'll start with the accommodations and the uh, sea keeping. Uh, patrol boats are kind of notorious for their, uh, their rough ride. A lot of people who spend a lot of time on patrol boats complain that they just get beat up. And uh, so part of, the, part of the goal for this class of patrol boats is to make it just a little more habitable. So if you're going out for several weeks at a time and the seas are rough, it's just not, it doesn't take quite as much of a toll on the body. So some of the things that they've done, uh, whereas a 110-foot cutter has berthing forward, which is the part of the ship that rides the worst, We've taken all the burning and put it center line and very low in the ship, so it rides much better. Also, the pilot house, rather than being forward, is, uh, is quite a bit further aft, and so that reduces the uh, accelerations or the, uh, the amount that the people on the bridge actually go up and down in the heavier seas. So, those who have spent time on, on the other platforms, uh, once we've been underway on this and, and we notice the difference, it's uh, very apparent that this ship rides much better than the uh, predecessor ships did. A little bit more about the electronics. And the stuff. electronics, certainly. Um, so this has a uh, an integrated navigation and intelligence uh, reconnaissance. They call it a C4ISR suite. Um, so some of the things that it can do is, uh, for example, our radar can actually integrate infrared um, visual imagery into our radar. So if we detect contact, not only do we have a, an electronic detection. We can also verify that with an automated information system or AIS uh, contact. And also, we can use our infrared camera to automatically pan to and focus on that contact. So we have um, a, a good idea of its geographic position, its bearing and range, anything that, that they're broadcasting by AIS, and also a good visual on the contact, which is just kind of a, an amount of integrated right information that we didn't really have um, before. Um, some other things is we can actually communicate with our, uh, our command center back ashore, and we can take that contact and say, hey, uh, is, is there anything out, out there that any kind of intelligence that you have on this contact that we should, uh, maybe we should board it or we should uh, report it or anything like that? And much faster than we were able to before, we can get that information back on board and use that to process that. Is it a high threat contact or something that is innocent and we can just let it continue on its way? Okay, and one last question. The sector has the Bernard Weber and the Richard Etheridge, and I'm just wondering what's the most challenging test to date um, that any one of the three vessels has faced and how did they respond? Well, I think to date, for, for us personally, uh, we actually, we got our cutter and uh, nine days later we had to evacuate for uh, Hurricane Isaac, which is coming through the Florida Keys. So if you ever think about moving into a new house, that's kind of what we were doing. We had gear here and there and trying to put everything away. And all of a sudden, uh, we said, oh, we got to get the ship underway, and, and we went up to uh, Port Canaveral. So for us, that was just kind of accelerated our, our uh, timeline a little bit as far as uh, getting the ship underway and sailing. And uh, it was not 
not real bad, but the seas were a little rough going up there, so it just kind of gave everybody a, a quick immersion and being underway. Um, as far as operations, uh, really our biggest hurdle so far has just been getting a new class of ship up and running. We don't have very much that's already there as far as doctrine or established procedures for us to look at and say, okay, that's how it's been done, that's how we're going to do it. So we're sort of pioneering a lot of the, the, uh, the ways of doing things. And then collectively, between the three cutters that are, that are here right now, just sharing our lessons learned and kind of trying to come up with what's the best way to go about doing this particular mission. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, Captain Allen. Yes, my pleasure. Okay.